Hello world and welcome back to another episode of Ars Nouveau where today we're going to be covering all the magical trinkets you can get inside of the vanilla base mod. We will eventually be covering all the things you can get inside of Ars Elemental and Ars Instrumentum but I wanted to keep this episode being purely uh, vanilla based Ars Nouveau. There's many trinkets to cover so we're in for a long one today so uh, let's jump right into it. The very first thing we have is the Alchemist's Crown. This is very simply made with a golden helmet and three glass bottles inside an enchanting apparatus and this is a bauble slot that goes in the head part this is simply going to allow you to drink your potions instantly however this doesn't quite work as you would think it's not as simple as holding the potion you want and then drinking it it does not work like that because you will still drink it instead once you equip it in your ball slot if you press g by default it will open up a radial menu this radial menu is now segmented into numbers. These isn't, this isn't the quantity you have in your inventory. If I hit the number one or two or three, it would drink this potion now instantly. So we have invisibility, swiftness, and leaf, um, leaping. If I press one now, it will instantly drink that potion as you see here. If I press G again, I can then press two or one again here. And if I press two, two doesn't seem to be working. However, one does. Very interesting. Maybe you can't instantly drink this. Okay, yep, apparently you can't instantly drink the potion of lingering, uh, which, uh, or launching, which is a bit strange. The next things we are going to create are actually material components for the next tier of items. First, we have the dull trinket, the mundane belt, and then we have the ring of potential. So it, it, these are simply made with all different types of source here, and then we're either using leather or we're using iron nuggets. We're moving on to the actual pendants first. We have got the Amulet of Mana Boost. This is made inside an enchantment apparatus, and this requires three diamonds and five source gems. Then you just place your dull trinket in the center, and this will give you your Amulet of Mana Boost. This is gonna give you a flat base addition of 50 mana points. So if I have my spell book here, it says that I have 1870. If I was to equip this mana boost, it would then go up to 1920, I believe, to our mana bar. So inside of here, we'll find our amulet slot. Is that the charm slot? No, I suppose it's actually at the top here. Here you go, amulet slot. If I click this here, this now goes up to 1920, as you can see. Similarly, we have the Amulet of Mana Regen. This requires a dull trinket, but this time with two diamonds, two gold, and four source gems in an enchanting apparatus. And this will give us plus three mana regen. Again, this goes in our bauble slot. We can have two amulets in this mod pack, and this will give us mana regen. So we're going to be able to get our mana more quickly on in our bar. Next, we have the Belt of Levitation. This uses the mundane belt and enchanting apparatus, and you're going to need four gold, one air essence, and three feathers. And this is simply is going to allow you to basically float a small distance and slightly reduce fall damage. So in here, we want to find our belt slots, which will be somewhere down here, I imagine. No, there is a bracelet. There you go. We get two belt slots, apparently. And this is going to allow us to float. So now I'm in survival mode, otherwise this wouldn't really work too well. We have the belt of levitation equipped, and all we have to do is when we're in the air, hold down shift, and we start floating, as you see here. We cannot go too high, it's a couple of blocks, uh, but as you can see, it is dependent on what's underneath you. So I'm probably, well, it looks like about five blocks in total that I am floating, and as I go over to these blocks here, uh, we'll obviously go up another five blocks, as you can see. So it just depends on what's underneath you. So it's very useful for either when you're falling off a cliff or something and you want to save yourself or you actually want to climb up a mountain because you will slowly just start basically walking on the walls. If we go over to here, as you can see, it should start pushing us up. No, it doesn't because uh, it's not like climbing because there's nothing under me. Oh, that block's under me. We actually get to go under. It's a bit finicky to use, but it does work. And again, it slightly reduces fall damage. Next, we have the Belt of Unstable Gifts. This is very difficult to make. Well, not difficult, just tedious. It requires a feather, sugar, nether wart, blaze rod, glowstone dust, fermented spider eye, redstone dust, and a brewing stand inside an enchanting apparatus with a mundane belt. And this belt is very, very strange, as this will just basically randomly give us um, any type of potion effects randomly um, throughout our playing the game. 
As you can see, we just got ourselves around a bit of Regeneration 3. Now, obviously, this varies as well. We could have had Regeneration 1 or Regeneration 2, and as you can see, we now have Slow Falling. So it's completely random the effects we can get. They can be anything in the game. I'm not sure if they can actually be negatives. It could be that we could get negatives as well, uh, but it is completely random, and they are at different effects. You can see they are just slowly rotating all the time. Could be useful in a fight. Could be very different in a fight. It doesn't really go around in a specific order. It's all complete random. Next up, we have the Ring of Lesser Discount. This is made with four diamonds, two ender pearls, two source gems, and the Ring of Potential inside our enchanting apparatus. And this is going to give us plus 10 max mana, as well as one mana regeneration. But the main thing it's going to do is actually reduce the cost of our mana. Now, you can wear multiple of these at once. As you can see in our ring slot, we are slowly uh, gaining more and more mana now. We're now up to 1960. But a better thing to do with it is to really actually upgrade this. I keep turning off our baubles. We can upgrade this to the Ring of Greater Discount. This gives us four diamonds, more two source gems, and two blaze runs with the lesser discounted ring to get the greater. And this is basically going to be a stronger ring of discount. So we get more uh, discount off our spells. We still get only plus 10 mana and one plus one mana regen. And we can wear multiple of these, but the main reason we're using this is to obviously reduce the amount of mana we use in a spell. Just to throw the difference here, I have made ourselves a projection, uh, projectile and harm spell, and we're just going to simply test the two of these. So by itself, this will cost... It appears I'm generating mana for, faster than I can use it. Yeah, that actually does seem to be the case. I'm generating mass, mana faster than I can use it. Let's make something a little bit more uh, sporadic. So this one uses 25, as you can see here. Can I get this up to 100 even? There you go. 90? There you go. A random spell. This is going to use 100. I think it's not really using too much because I'm regenerating things rather quickly. Is it because I have these amulets? Probably. It uses more like 70, as you can see there. Probably does use about 100. Nah, it uses more like 70 to me, that does. But if we have the Ring of Lesser Discount on here, it uses about 60 now. Obviously, we get that plus 10, but yep, it's now using about 60. If we take this off and get the Ring of Greater Discount, which is this one here. Put this on. Obviously, we get that plus 10 again, and it's using roughly about 30. So it, it's near enough half that we're taking off now. So before it was 10%, now it's more like 50%, if that makes sense. Next, we have the Annotated Codex. This is made inside a crafting table with a piece of parchment and a piece of leather. And this is going to allow you to basically copy all the glyphs that you know into a simple codex. Now, you do need XP for this. So if we go into survival here, we see we have 30 levels. And if I wasn't creative and I didn't or I didn't have enough levels, if I right click this, your records of your known knowledge... You record your known knowledge. Oh, it just uh, it just did it automatically. Well, usually what it says, if you don't have enough levels or when you uh, initially grab it, uh, maybe if you don't have your Archmage spellbook with you, it will tell you that how many levels you need. For me, earlier it did tell me that I needed 22 levels in total. However, for me, it worked in creative. It wasn't earlier. So yeah, now we have these codexes and we can reuse this to learn all of our uh, glyphs if we so needed. But the best thing about this is for sharing. Instead of everyone on the server or everyone in your friend group to actually have to make all their glyphs themselves, one person can learn them all, make this codex, and someone else can grab it and learn it. It will consume the annotated codex, though, on learning. Next up, we have the Dowsing Rod, made with two archwood planks and a gold ingot. This is going to allow us to actually find any magical creatures in a 75 block radius, as well as any amethyst, amethyst chunks. So we right-click this here. It's going to give us two things. It's going to give us magic find and scything or scrying scrying yes and you can see every highlighted uh creature we have near us is uh, all magical based as well as that we have uh underneath the ground it will start showing us these little blue things we have here now there are different levels depending on how far away it is Bl uh, blue means i believe it is quite far now i am going to read the rest straight from the book here oh it's not even saying well, blue means it is actually quite far away. However, if we keep going down, we do only have 20 seconds to get down here. But as you can see, if we keep going down, the colors are going to change slightly. The closer we get, obviously, it starts dropping down the closer we get. Now it's gone to more of like a teal uh, thing. So it's, it's a little bit closer, essentially. And when it gets to white, it means that they are very, very close. So as you can see here, 
And here we have got our amethyst. Lovely. Next up, we have the Enchanted Bow. This is made inside an enchanting apparatus. You'll need a block of gold, a block of source gem, and manipulation essence. And this will get you your bow. Now, the bow can be fired without uh, having any arrows. However, what you're essentially going to do is um, fire arrows that won't actually do anything, essentially. Now, I think we do actually need some arrows to begin with. There we go. We can fire some arrows now. As you can see, we're just firing ordinary arrows here because uh, we don't have anything set. Uh, if we don't have any arrows, then it's not going to fire anything. The real cool thing about this, though, is that we can actually set any spell we want to actually fire. Now, before we continue, we can also make a crossbow as well. It's made the exact same way, but with a crossbow in the center. Um, now, when we uh, have to apply a spell, is we need to use the scribes table. So we place this in the scribes table, or we can use an enchanter's crossbow, and then we can make any spell we want. So here we have this one that we made earlier, which was just a simple harm spell. Uh, now, the cool thing about this is that we do not need a form. In fact, it's, it stresses, do not use any type of form. Only use uh, effects and uh, augments, which is pretty cool. So what we could do is actually use this to actually break things if we so wanted to so if we put this on here we now have this spell and we can actually use this to uh break blocks as you can see here if we so wanted to now that did use an arrow now because we have a spell on here we can still fire this you can see and it is still using the spell effect which is quite cool however if we were to hit a mob so let's get ourselves some spiders here actually spiders is going to be our main uh sort of enemy we're going to use in this tutorial today uh if we have ourselves a spider what it's actually going to do is uh it's going to still attack the mob but it's going to do zero damage as you can see there so uh not the greatest if you do have a spell actually attached make sure it's going to do damage so you still want arrows in your inventory you can't completely make it cheap uh, however if we did have this on here and we made a different spell uh we could still make certain effects happen so if we had flame aoe and uh I don't know what else that's to say. Not explosion. Explosion was very bad last time. Um, how about launch? We'll launch them as well. We can put this on here. Now, even though we don't have any arrows in our inventory, I just deleted them. Uh, what we can still do is fire it and the effects will still take place as you can see here The actual impact itself did zero damage, but all the effects still happened. So it still can be used uh, Just like that took a while for launch to actually get into it though Ripperoni and pepperoni. Now something I should explain between these two different devices here when you have a bow Your mana is going to be taken out of your bar when you fire it as you can see here And apparently I just attacked that block which is pretty cool However with the crossbow you are going to be loading arrows into it And what happens there is when you load the arrows into it the mana is going to be taken once it's actually loaded So obviously this one's just firing arrows But if we put the uh, same spell into this as you can see here when we load the arrow You'll see in the bottom left hand corner then the mana is taken so You can sort of preload a mana spell with the crossbow which is pretty cool so the other cool thing about this, though, is that the bows and the crossbows ha can actually have specific arrows as well. So here we've got three different types of arrows. We have got the uh, amplify arrow, the pierce arrow, and the split arrow. Now these do all exactly as they say on the tin. They're going to require all the greens you see here. And uh, the amplify is essentially going to use... Um, Basically, if we have this, we we know we have 10 slots. So what we could do in theory is we could have, say, uh, Ignite. Uh, not Ignite, that doesn't amplify. We could have Flare. We could amplify this. No, we can't. What is it? Launch. Let's amplify Launch. So we've got Launch and 9 Amplifies. If we put this onto our bow, just like so, uh, it now reads that we have that. But what we could do is then have an amplify sp uh, arrow into it. Now, what this would do is we would launch this with 10 amplifies instead. Why did you not even do it? Interesting. For whatever reason, launch isn't seeming to work on uh, entities. However, when we use launch on a block, this is now going to be plus 10 amplify because we have one amplify arrow being used. And as you can see, it fires a block very, very, very high. And then it obviously goes past <laughs> what we do have as well is obviously some other ones we have got pierce pierce is going to allow you to essentially you know 
do multiple blocks at once or multiple entities at once so say we have uh, ignite if we fired that into a pool of enemies the arrow would actually go through at least once and hit a second enemy obviously we are using it on blocks right now so it would go through as you can see with multiple blocks the last one is split which is very handy because split is actually a tier three uh glyph inside the book so this is a way of getting split early now i am going to do this over here but what we can do obviously is have the same effect and split it we get three by default something i was a little wrong about these um arrows over here these are actually made in enchantment tables these are made in imbuement chambers something i did not say correctly Next up we have another tool and this is the Enchanter's Mirror. The Enchanter's Mirror is made with two glass, two gold, any uh, type of archwood log, two manipulation essence and a source gem block inside the enchanting apparatus. And this is going to... Bloodstain. And this is going to do something very interesting. Like the uh, bow is able to actually create spells, the mirror is allowed to do any sort of self spells. So um, it, will, it will rather cast things on yourself. So uh, most people will probably use just a heal spell like this, but obviously you would have to use self first. If you use heal, this will use 50 mana, but if we have self and then heal, uh, this will use 60 mana. So it's a way of getting slightly cheaper. So you don't want to have self here. We want just ordinary heal here. Uh, which is like that we'll have that on here and this is now set and now this will just do self and heal this will heal me as many times as i want and it will only do this one spell so it takes gives you an extra set spell slot inside of your uh, uh mage book essentially now there are other things as well when it comes to this obviously you can use heal now if you have multiple heals like this as you can see is that we have uh, obviously 10 heals here this is 500 mana now which is very expensive what you want to really use is something more like Amplify. So if we Amplify one heal, they're going to essentially do the same thing, but this costs only 230 now. As well as if you have your Rings of Lesser Discount, as well as your mana boosts and uh, other amulets, things will get very cheap very quick. Uh, the next mana thing we have is the Enchanter's Shield, made with two blocks of gold, two Source Gem blocks, and a shield. This is essentially going to work as any other shield in the game, as you it's simply going to block uh, damage, but this does some other things. When you do successfully block an attack, attack it's going to give you added mana regen and also give additional damage to any spells you have inside of your spell book for a short period of time as well as that the shield itself will just naturally repair itself much like the armor by using any mana that you have the next item we have is the Enchanter's Sword. You can probably guess where this is going. This requires a diamond, two gold blocks, two source gems, and a diamond sword. It must be a diamond sword. And this allows you to use any touch spells on a uh, given sword, obviously. Uh, this also, the very last effect, will have one more amplifier applied to it. So what do I mean by this? So obviously we have this sword by default. It's going to be the base damage of a diamond sword here. However, if you put this in here, I've gone and pre-made some sword spells in here. So here we have got a touch spell. We do not need to have touch here, as you can see. So we can actually take that away. We can have something else. Uh, how about we just have, say, lightning to start off with. So if we have lightning, cut, amplify uh, ignite aoe twice that over flare uh, amplify that twice and then launch this is going to do something interesting we then apply this to here now we're going to put this over here so no bad things happen if i do this here and we hit this guy we have all the different things here obviously that was a one hit kill this is because obviously it got hit by lightning it got on fire then did flare which is an aoe effect so if we did this like this it sets it to all of them as you can see here it's quite powerful this sword can become now what do i mean by the last amplifier hello you're from evil craft mr spirit very strange this launch has been given level one amplifier applied to it so this this could allow us to essentially have a extra sort of uh, attack so what we could actually have is launch with nine amplifies but because we put that on the sword we'd actually end up with a tenth amplify if that makes sense so uh, let's put that in here we'll set that like that so this now has just basically 10 amplifies as it says there it even says 10 amplifies so we can just do that and it launches them into the stratosphere as you can see here very powerful and i feel like you're going to die on impact sir ripperoni
The last type of spell-based equipment we have here is the Enchanter's Wand. This is made with any type of Archer log in the center, two gold, a manipulation essence, air essence, and four source gems. And this is going to allow us to fire any type of projection-based spells. It's all done in the exact same way. You put this on the crafting table, or the scribes table, sorry, and we make any sorts of craft. Uh, and here we can have any different types. Here I've got myself a break, and this break is going to have loads of AoE and then loads of pierce here. So let's have this. We'll place this onto our wand here and now this is going to be fired as a projectile now you're also going to get one level acceleration as well when you do this so i have already gone and pre-tested this over here uh with this tunnel but as you can see if i place this here it's going to break a large variety area so uh it can be used very powerful for anything you want it doesn't have to be used as a utility based thing we can obviously fire offensive spells as well uh, next up, we have the Splash Flask Cannon. This is made with a dispenser in the center of your enchanting apparatus, four gunpowder, two gold ingots, and two blaze rods. And this is going to allow you to actually use any potion in your inventory or flask. We'll come onto flasks later uh, and actually turn it into a splash damage one. So if we get ourselves a potion here, and we're going to get ordinary potions. So we're going to have instant health here. We're going to have uh, slowness. Why not? We could have nuts instant health again. Let's have speed. And then what we can do is press G similarly to our crown at the start and this is going to allow us to actually fire any of these as a splash damage so if we do swiftness sorry that's actually used our crown hasn't it we don't want it like that we want to do it with the weapon wheel the weapon wheel is not g this is going to be uh v v is the default as like your archmage spell book or any spell book v is your quick summon so what you can do is have your flask here and then you can do instant healing just like that and that's now loaded inside you can see it's now turned red a little bit now i can just simply right click and it will fire it as a splash potion so that's all it is you can just simply select it and that will load it and then you can fire it with swiftness as you see here next up we have something very interesting this is a focus the focus of block shaping this is made inside your enchanting apparatus again with a manipulation essence this is going to require one piston one slime block one diamond and one gold ingot there is a well out there that it's being very very loud now this uh foci is going to be actually used inside of our focus augment or, or um bauble as you see here so let's place this inside of here now the book tells us a couple of different things this is going to do, but this is going to basically allow us to manipulate blocks as if they're entities. And this is going to allow us to actually duplicate um, certain spells across blocks. Now what do I mean by this? I have made very, very specific um, spells which are given to us in the uh, book here. Now let's just get a potion of uh, night vision very quickly. Uh, we'll just do this as a splash. Let's do that there to uh, demonstrate this. So in the book, it explains very simply some very powerful things you can do and i'm going to read basically off that and the back here so we have got two different types one is throw ice which is i have made which is conjure water freeze launch delay and knockback this is going to as it says throw ice it's going to conjure water it's going to then affect that water with freeze launch it in the air give it a slight delay and then throw it with knock black so uh, we'll actually do that up here first uh, which is which one do i have that on i think i have that here throw ice as you see here number six is what we have we have this as a projectile so first as you can see here's my testing ground here let's take this off first and show you what would happen if we fired this now it's simply going to make a block of ice it's going to spawn the water and then throw it however it hasn't been manipulated so it hasn't worked however with this it's going to now manipulate the block so it's going to do the exact same thing, except this time it's going to pick it up and throw it, as you can see here. Now I've got a, a duration down on my delay, so it happens more instantly, and then I have Amplify. So in here we have got ourselves some uh, golems here. Now if we're going to get some golems ourselves, and these are going to be uh, basically our test dummies here, uh, just because they're a little bit bigger. So what we can do is do this, and you can see... It's a decent amount of damage this does. So they have 108 to begin with. Now it's at 82. So there's nearly 30 damage there. Was it actually 26 damage? It's quite powerful for a block of ice. Now obviously I'm using a lot of Amplify here as well. So you can do this for many different things. You could also use this as a bit of a utility, which is the other type of spell that I have, which is this one here. Uh, sorry, no, this is another offensive spell. This is actually uh, throwing it with mage blocks. So mage blocks uh, we know are basically... Uh, almost invisible temporary blocks however if i do it with this i have just made a mage block that i can throw in an aoe that will set things on fire as well as give that knock black original damage 
quite powerful, as you can see here. If we weren't to have our foci on here, though, uh, what we would do is make a mage block and it would just simply not affect the block. It wouldn't actually make it turn on fire because we haven't got our basically this is a block effect type thing. Uh, now, the last one is actually for um, making sand automatically. So we have here projectile, uh, then we have crush. If we crush stone, it will turn it into um, uh, gravel. And then we have it as an AOE effect. So obviously we get four and then we have crush again to turn the gravel into sand. So how this would work under here, we're going to need another night vision, aren't we? Let's do it like so. If we have here without our foci on, if we place this, what it does is it does affect everything in this one block. It has made an AOE of the three gravel and it has done the second effect on the block we are looking at. However, the cool thing about the foci does is that it, with the AOE effect, it's going to actually transfer the spell to the other blocks. So if I do this now here, it's now affected all four blocks. It has not only turned them into sand with the second effect, it has actually um, broken them all as well. So it doesn't mean, it, so what it does, it saves space. Because usually what you'd probably need here is a, a second or third AOE. So what we'd want without the foci is we would then want AOE again, and then we wouldn't break on an AOE. This is what we'd want without our foci, uh, like this. It does the exact same thing, but because we have this foci, we can now remove these other things, and it saves us a couple of slots. Because it saves us these other slots, we can make more powerful spells. We could add, uh, say, this many more AoEs if we wanted to. Uh, so we want another crush, and then another break, and this will give us a larger sand, obviously. And it affects all of them automatically. This foci can obviously be very, very powerful. There are other things that it says inside of here. As so you can see, it says damage ignite mods. That's what we did. We could also do ignite TNT, throw exploding terrain, um, throw many blocks, uh, pull blocks, and so on and so forth. You have to really use your imagination, but these are just the ones that the actual mod author has given us. Next we have here is the focus of summoning. This is another foci similar to this uh, block shaping one here. This requires a gold uh, ingot, all three types of Wilden drops, and then you also need a Wilden tribute, which we covered in the previous tutorial, and then you'll need a source gem block. This is essentially going to buff your summons. Now, what do I mean by summons? We have many different summons inside of this book. We obviously have summon Sid, summon Steed, um, summon the undead, and summon Vex. And we also have summon wolves um now this is probably going to be mainly used on say the undead summon vex and summon wolves i mean you could use it on the steed but you do not have to so for here i have got two different spells we have summon vex to begin with and this what we have literally is that we fire it as a projectile we summon the vex they have a long period of time that they are extended now the buffs that you have with your summonings is that they will do more damage they will last slightly longer they will have slightly more health and so on and so forth However, we have another sort of augment we can do. If we were to summon our Vex here, like uh, so, we'll summon them here. Here we've got our three Vex. We don't currently have our Foci installed, um, but so let's install our Foci here. Uh, so let's actually do that again. So they, have, they are buffed. There's no real way to tell that they are buffed, besides the fact that they obviously have their particle effects on them now. What we can do is now do a second spell. If we use any spell that is either self or orbit, it was then put it onto us, obviously, but it will also put it onto our summons. So we have a second spell here, which is orbit and then um, ignite. So if I place this now, it's now giving us orbit as well as all of our vex. So let's do summon vex again. Let's summon quite a few of them, as you can see here. If we then do our second one, it's now put orbit on all of these different vex. It ends up being rather powerful, especially if you say have uh, loads of spiders around, things will die rather quickly. <laughs> The next item on our list is the Jar of Light. This is more of a utility-based um, item here. This is made with two glass, four glowstone, and two redstone lamps with a glass bottle inside of enchanting apparatus. And this essentially creates a light that will follow you. You can just simply right-click it and it will work. You can't really tell um, at this point, but as you can see, it's just this little bauble. As you walk, it will just create light. So if you go in this tunnel we created, uh, as you can see, this light will just follow us and create a decent space. Uh, nothing special, I wish it was more of a fluid thing rather than speed respawning a bauble and it can, can be turned off or on with a right click. Very, very nice. 
Next, we're going to the back side of the board. This is now the Jar of Voiding. This is made with an Allow item scroll, Ender Pearl, Empty Bucket, and a Lava Bucket with a glass bottle in the center of our apparatus here. And this is going to be our Jar of Voiding. The Jar of Voiding is going to allow us to basically whitelist, or rather, it's going to white, we can whitelist blocks to basically void on pickup. So it's almost like you're self blacklisting things, if that makes sense. You can do this in two different ways. Uh, for what one we're going to use is uh, grass and we're going to use, say, uh, cobblestone. Let's do these two. So there's two ways you can uh, actually add things to your voiding. If you want to do things in bulk, I recommend put the, putting this on the scribes table. And if you just simply, uh, sorry, if you shift right click with that block in hand, it will add that item to your voiding jar, as you see here. This will now uh, not pick up grass blocks. Uh, now, what we can do is obviously put cobblestone on here as well, and we have multiple different things. We can pretty much do, I think, infinite amounts of items on this or blocks. Um, it's completely up to you, and to simply remove them, you can just hold shift and um, click them with those blocks again, and it will remove them. The other way you can do it is if by uh, having these in your offhand and then right clicking, it will also add them to um, the jar avoiding while you are on the fly. Now, just to show this in action, it's going to be very simple. What we'll do is we'll just have ourselves a, uh, let's just get rid of this and we'll have a break spell like so. We'll have projectile and break. We have both of these added now to this. In fact, I can just do it by dropping it on the floor. If I drop this on the floor now, like so, when I go to pick it up, it won't actually go in our inventory. We're empty right now. When I pick it up, I didn't activate it. <laughs> you have to hold shift and right click to activate it. There you go. We'll pick that up. There's no cobblestone in inventory. We go to pick it up. It does say we picked it up, but obviously it has just completely voided it. It's very good when you're mining and you obviously don't want all of these extra resources. Or you could say you've gone to a mob farm that you've created and you only want to pick up one type of item. It's very, very handy. Next up, we have flasks. I told you we were going to be coming to flasks shortly. This is made with two abjuration essences, one source gem block and one block of gold with a glass bottle inside our enchanting apparatus. And this is going to actually um, allow us to have eight different or not a different, eight of the same type of potion. Now, there are two ways that you can do this, one of which is with a potion jar, which we've covered in a previous tutorial. Here we have a potion jar of swiftness, and all we have to do is simply right-click, and we'll fill this up one at a time. Uh, the potion jar can hold up to 100 uh, different potions, or 100 of the same potion, and this can obviously hold eight, so we can take out eight charges at a time. All we do is simply drink it, and then this will give us our potion. Now, I do not know if this can be used in tandem with our flask here. So let's give this a go. It does actually to be the case. So we can use this as a splash. As well as this, that, we are going to be actually able to use this with our crown as well. Uh, so if we have the crown here and we put this on our little head like this, we can then hold G and choose to drink it straight away as well. So it can be used in tandem with those two as well. Now, the cool thing about this flask is don't worry, you don't have to worry about actually, you know, having this flask emptied or you don't have to worry about using all of it all the time you simply can uh, shift and right click and it'll put these back into a potion jar now you can also do this in other ways if we have any other type of potion you can go into a crafting table that is just an awkward potion or a mundane potion you can go into a crafting table in your inventory or into this book and you can add the two together just like this as you can see here next up we actually have an enchant this enchant is called reactive Reactive is added through the enchanting apparatus and can be done on any single type of armor or tool in the game. And all it does is allow you to essentially set a spell onto a given tool. For this example, we're going to be using a sword. Here we have a netherite sword and we are using the uh, spell parchment here, uh, touch, which uh, obviously is happening on hit so we have touch we have cut it amplifies it then ignites with an aoe two effect then gives flare which is amplified by two and then it will launch the enemy this is what we're using here so we'll place this inside we're then going to need a lapis lazuli block and a source gem block and we are using ourselves a netherite sword as you see here we're going to get ourselves a new one instead of a broken one though and that is simply placed in here. Now, to start off with, this is going to use a uh, source to actually complete this craft. So that's something you're probably most likely going to struggle with. So here we have got ourselves some source and this turns us into our lovely sword here. 
Now, this can obviously have any other types of enchants on it as well. So we can obviously get um, smite on this, sharpness, um, uh, unbreaking, mending. We can have all these things on here as well. I do not believe that even though this has reactive, I don't think mana is going to regen this. But I could be wrong, but I don't think that is the case. Now, don't worry. If you have found that you don't like the spell that you have, you can actually give a different spell. All you have to do is simply get another parchment of any type of spell and then put that on here and it will will give another reaction and it will change the spell so don't worry you're not stuck to one per item now what you can do as well is um, you can simply use the grindstone as well to remove the enchant if you so wish so that is obviously reactive one we can also upgrade this to get reactive two we're going to need four blaze powder and all of the basic essences being air water fire and earth we put them all in the enchanting table and then you have to use your reactive one uh, item on it you cannot go all the way up to tier four you have to go uh, essentially uh, reactive one then two and then we've got three and then four uh, three is using emeralds and then abjuration conjuration manipulation essence with an ender pearl and that's to get us three and then to get four this requires four diamonds ender pearl and a wild and tribute this is the third thing we're going to need um our chimera uh, boss battle for and this to give us level four reactive so i have already made a level four reactive here as you can see here reactive four and this essentially just makes um reactive essentially makes your spells a little bit more powerful so since I'm in creative, it's pretty much going to happen every single time here. So we, if we have, uh, let's see, this one's just with reactive one. Oh, it's not every time. There you go. Reactive one. It hasn't actually happened yet. There you go. It happened that time. If we do it again, but with reactive four this time, it is going to happen once. Uh, is it going to happen? There you go. It happens another time. And then it happens another time. Pretty much if it's reactive four, it's going to happen every time. So that's all it is. Reactive is the chance for a spell to happen. The next thing we have is the runic chalk. This is made with a manipulation essence, one mage room fiber and a bone meal. And all this is simply going to do is turn any rune spell that you have created and it will turn it into a permanent one. So very simply here, let's just make a rune here. We'll do a touch. We'll do, uh, let's see, where's rune? Rune. And then let's just say this does uh, launch with a load of amplify. That's all this does. If I now then place this here and then we can get ourselves some more spiders because we love having our spider friends help us out here. What this will do is obviously when they walk onto it, I'm in hard mode. When they walk onto it, it's going to take place as you can see here. However, what we can do is do a rune uh, chalk on it and what it will do is I suppose I could do it myself. <laughs> it will turn into this stone bit, and but it's not actually able to be reused. The way it works and the able to reuse it again is by having nearby source, and the rune uh, will automatically take source from a nearby source jar, and it will allow you to permanently reuse this rune. So, just like the way I have, you could just simply use it as a lift up to the next floor if you so wanted to. Um, so it's just little things like that. You could use it as a trap, you could use it as an attack, you could do it however you want, but it allows it to make it permanent. Now the last thing we have here are warp scrolls. Um, we have two different types. We have the warp scroll and we have the stabilized warp scroll. And these are used to make warp portals. To make warp portals, you are going to need source stone blocks, which are simply made, um, if I can actually see it, with a source gem and any type of rock, as you see here, to get eight. Uh, you sir, I think you have to leave. We'll do the rest of things in peaceful. So the first thing we have is the warp scroll. The warp scroll is made with four pieces of uh, source gem and four lapis and a blank parchment. This is going to allow us to teleport ourselves or anyone or anything to a very to a given area. So for example, let's just say this block here. We'll place this down and then we'll go all the way over here and then all we have to do is simply right click and we'll get instantly teleported to this location now i am in creative mode which allows me to keep my warp scroll but in survival this will use up the warp scroll now something you can do is actually teleport other ent entities to this specific point as well using blink so if we have here a uh, projectile and then uh blink what we have to do is simply have our warp scroll in our off hand and then fire blink at them I said we we're going to be in peaceful, but it turns out I cannot. So if we have this here, what we have to do is simply have our warp scroll in our offhand here and then do blink on an entity and it will teleport it straight to that location. Again, it will use up the warp scroll. 
The third thing way we can use this warp scroll is by making warp portals. Now warp portals can be a 1x1 one one square all the way up to a 21x21 21 21 square. And all we simply do here is have this bounce location as we do and make ourselves a portal frame just like this. We have got it 2x2 two two, and then we have to throw this in. However, something else you're going to need is actually a source of nearby uh, source. <laughs> so all we do is place this down as you can see it's made our source portal. Now you do not need source here to be hit to have this portal here open permanently. Permanently. Once it's open, it is open and it will not get destroyed. Now, this only works one way, but allows us to obviously always use this portal to get us to that one specific point, as you see here. Now, we do have an upgrade to our uh, warp scroll, and that is our stabilized warp scroll. Maybe worth to do at any given point. Ah, something else I should mention, the warp scroll, to make uh, warp portals, they do not work cross-dimensional. So you cannot have one of these in the nether to get back to the other world. They will not work with the warp scroll. Uh, the, a warp scroll only works in the same dimension. However, the stabilization scroll does work across dimension. This requires four blaze rods and two ender pearls inside our enchanting operations to get the stabilized warp scroll, as we see here. So now we can do this in multiple different ways. Um, again, we can just simply bind this to the floor, which we have here. Um, so we've recorded that. We can go all the way over here and then we can just warp ourselves back. Or not. You are bound. It works a bit differently, as you can see. Instead of actually teleporting you back, it's going to make a warp portal back to the location. Now, it says temporarily, so I don't actually know if there's a time that this will be disappearing but in the gui it does say temporarily but i can now just go through this so the stabilized warp scroll allows me to make this portal anywhere and anywhere that i so please as you can see here now the cool thing about this as i say is that this can be worked cross dimensionally so if we go into the nether here we are going to see that we are going to do this now the thing about this though is that you cannot just place this anywhere it does need to have enough space as you can see that the uh, portal will obviously not create but if we place this here i have made a small area this will obviously work and this allows us to actually teleport back home as you can see here so it's very very good at obviously using cross-dimensional now the other thing that you can do with this now i am going to show this in the uh, other dimension you can use the stabilized warp scroll to make a warp portal just like we did here however if we do do this in say the nether or any other dimension this is going to create a uh, stabilized dimensional warp portal now again, this is going to need a uh, source stone and you can make this any size once again, up to a one by one, all the way up to a 21 by one by one, 21 by 21 block portal. And all you have to do is simply throw this back in here and give it source. Now this is the only way that you will actually end up using up your stabilized um, scroll here. So this, nil, this portal will now work cross dimensional and it's obviously been made custom, um, but obviously you cannot, uh, you will not get your stabilized scroll back. Now, I believe you can actually change if you have kept the source here. Uh, you could change the location. So obviously this is currently just spawning us back to, um, if I can actually jump into it, this is spawning us here. If we took this over here, I believe we can change it by like that. I believe that's now changed the location. No, it hasn't. It has not changed location, so you're going to have to make a new portal each time. But as you can see there, you can actually drop blocks through it and they'll come into that location as well. So it is very good. I'm not too sure if you can actually do this horizontally. So let's make that as a test here right now. Probably will need some blocks underneath it. Let's get ourselves a stabilized warp scroll to there. That's not what I wanted. Okay, that was a bit broken. That's not what I thought it would do. But yeah, there you go. You can make horizontal portals. So yeah, we can simply throw this down. As you can see, we are making blocks just randomly appear somewhere over there. We're making blocks appear. Let's make it somewhere a bit closer. Let's do that right here. So obviously we can make blocks just appear like this. We can make entities go through here, but we can actually also make spells go through it. So here we've got our, um, let's say our Vex ones. In fact, Vex is a bit silly, but yeah, we can fire this. If I actually get the right one. Let's have a projectile, please. Throw ice. Why are you not firing? Ah, because you aren't actually... You don't have a projectile. Oh, you do have a projectile. Fire. There you go. As you can see, you can fire it through. It didn't work too well, but you can do it. Let's do a harm one. 
course I have touch. Let's do projectile. There you go. It is going through, but obviously it goes straight to that actual location. So probably a better use of this would be something like this. Let's get ourselves our stabilization spell. We'll put that there. We'll, we'll mark that. Sneak. I am sneaking. Now you'll mark that location. We'll break this, put a new one in, break that down, and then we'll fire a spell at it. There you go. As you can see, it's going in the same direction that we were in. So if we actually were to make this horizontal, which would be a little bit better, I imagine we'll use the stabilization one because we're rich and creative. Like that. Let's then get ourselves a portal here. Like so. I don't know how much the source gem is actually going to go. It may actually get sourced through that far away. It actually did. Wow. So yeah, if we file our portal now, as you can see, it goes in the same direction. Now go for a long time. But for now, guys, that is going to be everything when it comes to different trinkets and different materials we can get inside of Ars Nouveau. This was a very, very big episode, actually. There are some more things we can use in this. Uh, they're more mechanics-based things than actual individual items, um, such as our spell turrets and also um, some eyes as well, which we'll be showing off in the next episode. Uh, again, as I say, we are going to be going through the Ars Elemental and Instrumentum ones in a different episode uh, i wanted to keep this one being purely vanilla uh, ars nouveau base but this is pretty much all the trinkets you can get there are one or two more but they are working with the mechanics of other things as well so we'll show them in a different episode but if this video helped you out in any way shape or form please do not forget to leave a like and subscribe it will really help me out and ring the bell button to stay notified when these videos go live but until next time guys take care